All right, well, today is a shop day. We haven't had a shop day in quite a while, and it's time to spruce this place back up. It has gotten pretty bad over the last couple months because I know I'm gonna be tearing it down here in a month or so. So it's been hard to wanna upgrade it and keep it organized because I gotta pack it all away eventually anyway. However, uh, I just can't take it anymore. We have a bunch of new parts to store, new engines and transmissions to store. We've got new shop equipment to set up and use, but we're up to our eyeballs and, and stuff and clutter. So it's time to uh, get it set up, get it organized, play with our new shop equipment, that's always fun and uh, make some stuff because we have a lot of projects to tackle both new projects current projects slash old projects and then reoccurring projects like the ls miata that needs a new subframe the exhaust rebuilt radiator rebuilt uh, there's a lot of stuff to do but we don't have the best setup going on here to do it we need to get this fixed up we're gonna need our new shop equipment so it's time to dive in and uh, get this place spruced back up first order of business is definitely gonna be clutter cleanup we need to start figuring out better places to put stuff and organize stuff because up to my eyeballs and stuff <laughs> All right, moving along nicely. I have got all of this pretty cleared out. These shelves, um, that's all consumables. I still need to go through those top two. I still need to finish clearing this one out, but this just kind of is in current, in progress projects is what I usually put here. And all the Sephiro stuff is still here because that was the most recent big build, but I think we can kind of finally pack that stuff away as we're moving on to other projects. I need to work on those shelves over there, get that all that raw fab material off and into a tote. Not where it goes. Uh, we need to work on under there so we can kind of slide the beams in here. Uh, there, anyway, there's still a few things to do, but we are cruising right along and I'm trying to purge as much stuff as I can. Anything that's not, I need it in the immediate future because again, we're gonna be moving out of the shop soon, tearing it down, building a new one. And I've got a container on the way, or it's ordered, hopefully it'll be here soon, to go in that back corner back there to shove all the shop stuff that we're not going to put in the garage as we work out of the garage. So anyway, moral of the story is the less stuff we have, the better. So even if I might use it down the road, sometimes it's better to just buy it again than to deal with trying to store it and then not knowing where it is. And uh, that's my philosophy on it. So I'm trying to purge as much stuff as I can. I got three trash cans full. Uh, but we still got plenty more to do. So I'm gonna get back in the groove here and uh, see if we can get this place straightened out because it'll be a lot nicer to work in here when it's uh, nice and organized. Back to work. Enough jibber jabber, back to work. <laughs> This is where I've become a bit of a pack rat. I've got two CDs. This one might be okay. Might have a toast input shaft bearing from when the pilot bushing went out. Uh, that one is pretty good. Just doesn't shift your rate second to third. Doesn't grind, but I just, you know, test of theory, put this one in and issue with that. We've got my 5.3 aluminum block. Set of heads off that. Another set of heads. Another 5.3 iron block. I got a 4.36 Z diff for whenever I need to upgrade a diff in the Sephiro. So I figured this thing is the low hanging fruit. I don't want to toss it, but it's just a 5.3 iron block that needs rebuilding. So this guy can, can chill in a less safe environment and we'll put the beams in here. I measured and it should just barely fit. Question is, how do we get all this stuff? I'm not looking forward to moving all this 
stuff again. Oh man, I measured wrong. Put a little strap around it just for safekeeping. Let's fall off the dolly. Oh, that's why. Oh, she ain't going to fit. I mean, we could probably squeeze her under there, but there's no real point. The iron block can come back for now. It's crazy how much heavier that iron block. Well, I guess it's got a second pair of heads on it, but the iron block with no rods and pistons, no cam, no accessories, no oil pan, feels pushing it so much heavier than this engine. And this has exhaust, intake, everything. All right, well, we're done with that for now. We got out here pretty well squared away. Got everything that's kind of got to stay out here and be accessible. Here we've got, you know, the oil jugs, dollies, yada yada. Um, this is all scrap, that's scrap. That's the subframe that's going to go in the Miata here shortly. We've got to build that out. Um, some more scrap, more scrap, um, and then some trash to throw away. So outside here is pretty much squared away. I need to do a little more cleanup over in this corner, but it's pretty close. It's a lot better. This was probably bugging me the most, just everything kind of growing off this wall and stacking up in front of each other, driving me nuts. So I'm glad we got that cleaned. Got it really sorted in here. We've got all the shelves open, which is perfect because we're diving into all these new projects and the shelves are just fully taken up with Safiro stuff and other stuff. Got the engine shoved over there. We've got the uh, engine stash, engine depot, uh, rainy day engine <laughs> program <laughs> uh, sorted up over here. We got all that squared away. Got the beam shoved in the corner. So there's still some more cleanup to do, still some organization to do, but I am getting too antsy. We got a little room now. It's time to uh, set up the new shop equipment. So uh, let me get this thing out of the box and show you what we got. All right, so what we've got is a new MIG setup. So it's actually a multi-process welder. We can do MIG TIG and stick, but we're mainly gonna be using it for MIG welding. Um, my current setup is just not ideal. It is way too bulky for what we're doing. Um, this is kind of a prime example of how things change and how your needs and your, your use case, all of that will kind of determine what works for you. And you've really gotta use something before you can figure out what you need and what you don't need. I mean, the same goes for cars. You might think, oh, I'm building a turbo truck. I want 1,200 horsepower. And then you build it with 700 just to see, and you're like, wow, actually, this is enough. Or I need 70 degrees of steering angle. And you drive the car with 35, and you're like, man, if I had 10 more, that'd be plenty. So I like to try to use things before I decide on going all out with something or some direction, because generally, you'll change your mind. So this is one of those things I changed my mind on. I thought this was going to be the ideal setup. That's why I built this whole elaborate cart for it. So the idea here is this is a multi-process welder, so it does make tick and stick, just like that one. Um, but it's a very, very big, large welder. and my plan was to have this as my mobile welding cart because my old TIG setup was super bulky and cumbersome. The welder alone was like the size of this welder with the water cooler and then it had a water cooler 
big elaborate cart. It had a wired pedal, so I'd have to like drag it out from behind the workbench. This one has a Bluetooth pedal. So the idea was to not have to move that one over to the car if I needed to tack weld something on the car, like an exhaust piece or a part or so on and so forth, and to be able to use this for that. However, now that I have this much nicer, much more compact setup, it, it's no big deal for me to roll this over to the car. It takes me like, I just gotta unhook the ground clamp, throw the lead on there, grab the pedal, boom, I'm out there, I'm tacking stuff on the car. So the change in this has kind of made this obsolete, <laughs> if you will. And what I, the only thing I really use this for now is MIG welding, and it's this big elaborate cart for MIG welding, because I've got the plasma cutter on here too, I've got two bottles, I built this top so I'd have a little workbench and it all seemed good in theory, but what ends up happening is now I just avoid MIG welding like the plague. Even even on the bench because I have to roll it out from here or the lead doesn't reach and it's so big it's kind of hard to position it anywhere. It's just, it, it doesn't work great for my setup. I mean, it's, it's, it bums me out to say that because I spent a lot of time building this cart and I was like, this is it, this is the bee's knees. But for me now, this is going to be a much better setup. It's a multi-process machine still, but it's much, much more compact. We got a much easier to use cart um, and just simplify things and have two separate setups. And I, mean, I have to admit, it makes the OCD happy to have like matching welders and matching carts. And I already know the quality difference of going from a cheap welder to that thing and I'm assuming this will be no different. It'll be nice to have a nice quality MIG welder finally. Again, I, I TIG weld everything, and it's not just because I like TIG welding, that's a lot of it, but there's times where I just, I've never had great luck using the MIGs that I've had, so I'm excited to see how this thing runs. So anyway, I know there's a whole lot of jibber jabbering. I just like tools, I like welders, I like shop equipment. It gets me hyped. It gets me more hyped than I think I do as a car person for car parts. I just love tools. And I, when you get a nice tool that you know is gonna last you forever, it's, it's a rewarding feeling to know like I'm not gonna have to get another one down the road. I'm not gonna have to worry about it. Like this is a tool that's gonna last me the rest of my life. There's just something special about that. I said enough jibber jabber. We're gonna get, we need to get this thing set up. So we've got pretty much an identical cart to the TIG setup. We just need to get the welder on, get all our odds and ends on, and uh, try her out. Let's get to it. Comes with this rubber mat so that, you know, just to protect it from harsh vibrations. I'm gonna put it the opposite of the other one because I'm gonna keep it on this side of the of the uh, welding table. Oh, I guess we need to have it on this side anyway. That works out for the door. Sweet, that was easy enough. I'll just go ahead and toss everything else on. All right, man, got this thing all set up. Put her into position here. End of the table. Dude, I, I, I shouldn't be surprised, but I'm always surprised by the quality of the Fronius stuff. It's just so good. This thing is super heavy duty. The nozzle is super heavy duty. Goes on super nice. The nos, the even the the tips are thick and heavy. Feel like they're gonna last forever. It's got a replaceable liner. It's a nice socket. Just a quick comparison to my old MIG gun, and this isn't some super cheap welder either. And uh, yeah, big difference there. So anyway, let's try to weld with it. Got it all set up. All right, let's see here. We've got auto settings, so let's try it. Steel, the R70S6. Thickness, so 30 wire. Oh, that's cool. I can... Ah, that's so cool. I can press that and set the regulator. 50. Oh, I, I just did it the old school way of like squeezing the trigger and then you got to cut the excess wire off. Let's uh, try to weld some scrap metal together. See how it goes. So this is like my MIG helmet. It's the beater because you get so much MIG splatter. I think that's a little spicy. Turn it down a little bit. Let's 
Spice it up just a little bit. Felt a little cold. Dude, I really didn't think it would make as big of a difference the jump from a cheap machine to a quality machine with a MIG, but I was wrong. I mean, you guys have probably, most of you have probably seen my MIG welds, but that's nicer than anything I've done on my old machine. And that's the first two rips. Dude, this thing is sick! Ugh, quality over quantity, let me tell you. You know, I'm always one to say, like, if you're getting into something new, give it a shot before you go wild, you know, like I wouldn't necessarily say go buy a super expensive TIG or MIG right off the bat. You know, see if you like it, see if you're gonna do it, but if it's something you know you're gonna like or you already do and you're looking to get your own, just, if you can, if you can afford it and justify it, just get the nice one off the bat. It just, it pays off in the long run anyway. I'm gonna need some new MIG gloves soon. I have MIG gloves, but they're just so bulky when you get used to, like my TIG gloves are super thin. So to wear some monstrosity like this, I just can't do it. So these are other TIG gloves. Not the best protection for MIG welding, but it works. Say it's a certified ripper. <laughs> oh man, this thing is solid, dude. Thoroughly impressed. All right, well, as expected, this thing is grade A solid. I mean, I knew it would be, but using it, it just, like I said, the quality of all their stuff always just blows me away a little bit. Like just every last thing, everything you touch, every last detail is just so nice. Now don't get me wrong, they're not cheap welders, but they, they do a really good job. And that's why I wanted to get a Fronius for the MIG. And I'm really glad to finally have a nice MIG welder. And I mean, very satisfying, right? The two, matching cart, matching welder. Uh, we have a bunch of big MIG projects coming up. We've got a lot of MIG welding to do coming up. So it was finally time to uh, step up, step up the MIG game. I never had great luck with the old one, no matter what settings I tried. It just never was 100%. So, I'm, I mean, this thing out of the box seems perfect. So I'm really stoked about that. And I'm stoked to get the shop all cleaned up. That has been on the to-do list for a while because we're coming up on the time where this thing's supposed to be torn down. It's looking like November for the new shop, which means we need to tear this down in October. Um, I'm not holding my breath on that. The material, uh, you know, ETAs keep getting delayed. So I I'm not holding my breath, but I need to be prepared in case it does happen that soon. So you know, we've got a lot to do. Like I said, containers on the way to go back there to fill with stuff. We got to set the garage up and get that ready. And, you know, that's kind of why I let the shop get as bad as it did, because I'm like, we're going to be tearing it down anyway, but I couldn't take it any longer. We have a bunch of projects on everything coming up. The 8.6, the Miata, the Sephiro, the Pulsar, and then obviously the turbo truck and potentially a new project. So <laughs> there's a lot of projects, a lot of work to do. Um, a lot of parts that need to stay organized and this place was just an absolute disaster So it's a huge weight off my shoulders to finally have some room to spread things out and keep them organized and just uh, a clean Organized space to work in and uh, for me that makes a huge difference But anyway, I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering on and on and on but oh, hold on <laughs> one more piece of jibber jabber before I forget Jibber jabber shirts are back in stock uh, if you're interested in one if you missed one last time they're in stock and we have just about it, both sizes of every other design in stock as well. So if you're interested in helping support the channel, uh, garagebuiltco.com, check them out, see if there's anything you like. Um, if not, that's fine too, but just figured I'd mention it before I forget. So with that, that is gonna be it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you later.